want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives.
sir. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. We'll turn it down, no problem. Y'all keep praising God. Y'all keep praising God. Y'all keep praising God. We praise God for Apostle James Darn and Prophetess Ebony Darn. And finally get an opportunity to meet in person. I think we FaceTime just about every day or every other day. All night long. This child. Listen, y'all don't understand. But we are so glad to be able to be here. Listen, we drove about 10 hours this morning to get here. And let me tell you something. When you care about people, and you want people to succeed, you want people to grow, what do you do? You stand with them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So um, <clears throat> we wanted Apostle James Nard and Prophet Ebony Nard. We wanted them to grow. We wanted them to succeed. When the enemy tried to tell them no, we knew that God was saying yes. That's right. And that meant we had to pull and plow with them. And we're going we to talk about some things today. I'm telling you, I don't know where I'm going with this thing. God gave me about three different messages. <laughs> so I, I've combined it, I guess, some of them together. Um, Forgive me now. Don't hate me because I'm the kind of person I may not see you again. So I'm finna tell you everything. <laughs> Just in case I don't see you again. Because I don't see you again, at least you be impacted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, all right. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something about this hotel. This hotel is so funny. It's really nice. I really enjoyed my room. I went in there and I decorated and got all my stuff together. Child got that shower. <laughs> Why does the water try to take me out? Uh -huh. That shower, I don't know what it is with them shower heads, but them things are super powerful. <laughs> and that water is super hot. And I slid, I said, oh, my God, not today, Father. Yeah, I had to hurry up and turn that water off real fast because that thing was going to make me slide up in there. <laughs> but I enjoyed myself. I'm so glad to be here with the Nards. I'm so glad to be here with you. Yes. We praise God because God has been so, so fantastic. Listen, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about me. I am from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Yes. Born and raised. My husband and I lived in New Jersey for a long time. And then God told us to move to what? Florida. On Christmas Day, we moved to Florida. And when we moved to Florida on Christmas Day, we didn't know how things were going to go. We downsized double, double, triple time. I downsized the house, my clothes, my makeup, my shoes, and my bags. <laughs> but <laughs> I downsized. But I had to do it. And that's right. It was obedience. You know, God told me to do it. I did it. Did it hurt me? Yes. Did it stretch me? Yes. Did it make me feel uncomfortable? Yes. Not only did I um, leave my home, um, family, my entire family, um, I even left my daughter. My daughter, she said, Mommy, 
I love you, I love daddy, but I'm not quite ready to go yet. So I said, okay. She said, can I just come visit back and forth? I said, sure, you can come visit back and forth. <laughs> so this girl's putting a hole in my pocket <clears throat> because I travel more to go see her than she do to come see me. But that's what mommies do. We sacrifice. So I sacrificed. My husband, he sacrificed. We sacrificed our business. We had a great business. We have a cleaning service and a home care business. And we were doing that. And I was I was working both businesses at one time. And when I tell you, it was, it was amazing. But I had to leave it all behind. And I'm saying all this to say to you because tonight you're going to have to leave something behind. All right. Yes. You're going to have to let something go today. Some of you, it may be your attitude. It may be your, may be your unforgiveness. It may be your, your pride. It may be your, 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 your feeling of being abandoned all the time. You're going to have to lay it out tonight. You're going to have to lay it at the feet of Jesus. And you're going to have to leave it there. You cannot return back to it. You cannot return to go get it. You just have to leave it there. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk a little bit about families. We're going to talk about Joseph and how his family cut him off and sold him. Some of y'all been sold. Some of y'all been sold. Oh, y'all been sold out. Y'all been sold spiritually, mentally. Your family done walked away from you. I'm a living witness. Well, I'm a living witness. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit of little bit about my stuff. I'm, I'm going to be real transparent. Some of y'all know me, some of y'all don't. I met this beautiful young lady. I was coming in the hotel with rollers up in my head, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Looking unsanctified. <laughs> Looking unsanctified. I came in. And uh, she met me at the elevator. She said, ooh, I know you. I said, ooh, you do? <laughs> She said, yeah, girl. Prophet is Ebony Nod. Pastor Nod. Girl, I saw you, and you was at the airport. I was like, I don't even know all my business. I don't even know her, but she know my business. Oh, my God. But I praise God. She knew my business. <laughs> Thank God I was doing right, OK? <laughs> Thank God I was doing right. Oh, because you know why I'm human. We can make mistakes, right? I don't care about your title, honey. We all prone to make mistakes. I don't care who you are. I don't care. I'm an apostle and I'm, I'm the apostle of the Lord's church. Well, baby, you acting like the devil's church today. It happens. We make mistakes. That's what happens. And I really do believe that Joseph's family, they made a mistake. My God. They made a mistake. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I really believe, you know, and I know Joseph, his father, felt like he was so perfect and he was so, so, so everything. He was just a perfect child. And I believe the story says that Joseph's father had, the mother was Rachel. And that was what? Rachel was the favorite. So when you have that favorite person in your life, and you have children with the favorite person, then that kid becomes what? The favorite child. Oh, glory to God. Favorite. But I'm gonna tell you something. They say favorite, favorite, but I'm gonna say favor is yes. not fair. It's not fair. Favor is not fair. And I don't believe that Joseph thought that he was the favorite. Because nobody in the family liked him. Come on. Come on. See, you can be considered the favorite. But when the family doesn't like you, Come on. it means nothing. It means like you you feel like you're like the black sheep of the family. Tell it, tell it. Tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Joseph's father, you all know that he gave him a coat. Cloak, coat, same thing. Okay, he was wearing that colorful thing. He was wearing that thing. 
and he was up there and telling people about his dreams. And I, I thought about it, I said, oh, Justin, he reminded me a little bit of Deidre. And that's my name, Deidre. It's not Deidre, but everybody in my family called me Deidre. Because Deidre used to have dreams and visions. And I would try to warn my family. And sometimes when I warned my family, my family would get angry at me and tell me that I knew too much. My God, my God. So I was labeled as Deidre. She told me too much. <laughs> because God. I didn't know it was God. My God, my God. My mama, I didn't know God could talk to me because see, even though I was the last child, yeah. I'm okay. So let me tell you a little bit. I got a lot of brothers and sisters like nine of us, all right? Some of us got the same mama, some of us don't. Some of us got the same daddy, some of us don't. But we all brothers and sisters. My parents done took in some other kids, they done adopt some kids, you know. Some people don't put some kids on their doorstep and say, hey, take care of these kids. So we was all raised together, nine of us. I'm, I'm the baby girl out of nine. And I got a younger brother, younger than me. He's nine years younger than me. I'm 42, well, be 42. And he's like 30 something, almost 30, whatever. <laughs> he, he young, okay? So, I was always labeled as the one that knew everything because the Holy Ghost used to speak to me. He used to talk to me in the middle of the night. And then I had this thing that I, I don't know if y'all know Benny Hinn, I used to like watch him. Yeah. Benny Hinn. Yeah. Benny Hinn, yeah. when I figured out what time Benny Hinn, see, I didn't know, I used to watch him and I used to get like intrigued and I said, God, I, I, I want to do that. Why did I say, God, My I want to do that? See, we got to be careful what we want ask for. Because sometimes what you ask for and when you finally do get that thing, you may not be ready to receive that thing. You may not be able to understand that thing. You may not even like it. Yes. May not even like it. I ain't gonna be too much long. Give me about another 15, 20 minutes and I'm done with y'all. But for real, I didn't realize that God was talking to me. And I would hear things in the middle of the night. I could hear conversations abroad. I would go back to church and I could tell somebody what they've been saying at home. I was that kind of kid and that used to get me in a lot of trouble. Teacher, you talk too much. You never shut. But it reminded me of Joseph. Joseph was that kind of dude. He heard things, he saw things, he had dreams. He was trying to warn his family. And guess what? They wouldn't listen. So what did they do? They set him up. And they got him. They put him in a put him in a pit. A pit where he couldn't get out of. How many of you been in a pit and you feel like you just can't? But God said tonight. Thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You see, this thing, now I'm you, this thing is a two-fold thing. And the reason why I say this thing is a two-fold thing because, see, it's a part that you've got to play. Salvation is free. Yes, yes. yes. it is. <laughs> but it pays. You got you to gotta work hard to keep that day. You got to work hard. And, and I, I praise God because, see, what I did not know was I had the kind of parents they were loving, they were kind, they were very, they were entrepreneurs. My father was a major entrepreneur. He was a licensed barber, had more than one barbershop, food truck. We had apartments, church, one of the biggest churches in Philadelphia. I mean, we was rock and go. We was doing real good. We was bouncing. <laughs> we was bouncing. You know what I'm saying? We was really bouncing. Let me tell you something. How many of you know that when people sow discord, yes. it messes up with the commune. Yes. <laughs> then in return, it messes up with the communication. Come on. Come on. The worst yeah. thing you can ever do in the midst of your store is sow discord. discord. Come on, set it up. The worst thing you could do is come for people all day long because it's gonna come back and bite you in the tail. Yes. Yes. 
is going to come for you one way or another. It's going to find you. It's going to get you, get you, get you, get you, get you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a storyteller. Just a tad. I didn't realize at a young age that my parents were so in discord because why? My father had babies before he met my mama. And then my mama, because she was the third wife. Yeah. My God. Lord. And she wound up being the favorite wife. And she had a kid that she shoved on the rod. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't tell nobody about it. But she was the favorite wife. And then they had a favorite child. Uh oh. Come on, come on. My good Jesus had a favorite child. But I was the unexpected child. Come on. I was the child that they weren't trying to hate you. I was the child they was a little angry. But they lost their figure. So they became perfect. But they threw me in the pit. So my mama was the discord person. Cause she knew how to get to you. My mama's fancy, she real fancy. She's decent. But she was very good with her words. She knew how to talk to her kids to make her kids hate one another. She knew how to put kids in a position where they felt if I didn't hang and I didn't agree with mommy, then I wasn't going to really succeed. So it's best for me to agree with mommy so I can be perfect and have. See, I was the kid that was plump. Still a little plump. I'm a little, <laughs> little shaped. You know what I mean? A little shaped. Like, hey, a little shaped. But I was that kid that was unusual. I was different. I was loud. I spoke my mind. Didn't like to, but I had to. Because see, that's the way my mom trained. See, we train our kids to hate. We train our kids to sow discord. We train our children not to like their siblings. It ain't their fault that daddy stepped out. It ain't their fault that mommy had kids before. It ain't their fault. So you know, mommy did this. So we learned how to lie on one another. We learned how to cheat one another. We learned how to hate one another. We learned from the best how to so dignify discord. My God, dignify. And that's what happened with Joseph. He he was telling them what was going on, but but you always got that one. I had brought some oranges with me. And all the oranges were great before I left. By the time I got here, I found that I had one serious rock orange in the bag, which was sitting on top of another orange, which made the orange that it was sitting on, oh, Shanda Rebecca Fababase, and destroyed that one. And in return, because the other one was sitting a little bit close to it, it got infected. And then the other orange got infected. So now Thank you, darling. What orange is good? Jesus. So I came with 20 something. By the time I finished, I, I think I only got maybe about seven or eight. See, that's what happens with family. That's what happens in ministry. People sow discord. Jesus. This is a new ministry. They don't need you to sow no discord on. If y'all not for them, do yourself a favor. Disconnect from them. Leave them alone. If you don't like them and you think you can do something better than them, if you can talk a little bit better, you can sound a little bit better, you got a little bit more anointed, well then you go start your own church. Lee Shackles Free Ministry. Yeah. 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 right. All right. Oh, yeah. go. She said, Pastor uh, Shannon, yes. do me a favor, sir. Yes, ma'am. Do me a favor, do me a favor. Yes, ma'am. I believe I got a little something here. I got some scripture back. Go to Colossians uh, 
fourth chapter, fourth chapter. Colossians. Colossians, thank you. Yes. Fourth chapter. Yeah. I'm yes. saying everything wrong tonight. Talking all kind of backwards, right? Oh, uh, do the six one. The six verse. Yes, six. I believe six, 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 six. Just six. Yeah, 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 six. Oh, it's talking about conversation. Yes, ma'am. Colossians four, verse six from the New Living Translation says, "Let your conversations be gracious." And attractive so that, so that you will have the right response Woo! for everyone. That's it, that's it. Y'all made me see the God bless you. Because I'm gonna go through a few more, so y'all ain't gotta count. Is it okay? The problem is they don't understand. We stand for it. Oh, y'all stand for every word? Okay, all right. Okay. I'm gonna stay right here for where I say, right, right there, right there. Let your conversation be what? Gracious. Gracious. Your conversation. Your conversation. And I just talking about ministry conversation. I'm talking about everyday conversation. I'm talking about as an individual kind of conversation. Yes. Yeah. That's right. If you have children and one is not as perfect as the other, do yourself a favor. Be the mother that you know to be. Work with your child. Love on your child. Teach that child. Show that child love. Take up a little bit more time, because you took up time to make them. Uh, then you need to take up time to teach them. You need to take up time. I mean, because I'm, no, I'm being real serious. Y'all probably say, oh, she a little vulgar. I don't like that. That is not godly. Listen, let me tell you something. God, I think your legs open ain't godly either, but you did it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You did it. Jesus. You did it, and you did it real good. You dropped it like it was hot, warm, cold, and spicy. <laughs> Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they understand. They'll be all right. Come here, boo boo. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, we don't have a problem doing these things. And when we get these children, we don't know how to raise them. Well, it ain't no handbook. Create a handbook. If you know the devastation of not being able to communicate with your mother and your father damaged you. Learn to communicate with what? There you go. You have to learn how to communicate with your children. You gotta learn how to sit down and say, listen, let's talk. Yeah. Because see, I'm not gonna beat you anymore. I'm gonna talk to you. Because apparently beating you, all it does is just makes you go do it again because it causes anger, frustration. All she's gonna do is beat me. And after a while, the children become immune to the beat. Yeah. It's just like a bad woman. A bad woman becomes immune to the beat. They know what kind of pills to take to become what immune to the beat. So when you slap them one way, at least listen, I took my I took the pills that I needed to take to cover myself. So I'm good. I'm good. The slap wasn't that bad. And you know what happens? When your girlfriend see your face and she goes, girl, what happened to you? I I, I made her mad. Now, now she found an excuse as to why you slapped her. Jesus. And then eventually your kids get to the point where they find excuses to why. Why you do some of the things you do. See, I found excuses after a while. I said, well, maybe my mom just, she just got issues. Come to find out, it ain't she got issues. She didn't want to do no better. She knew how she was taught, but she, and, if you're, and then she got to a point where she didn't want to communicate. It was her way or the highway, that's it. And I, and, 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 and I really do believe that Joseph did his best to try to keep his mouth shut, but he was trying to warn his family. He was trying to tell them tragedy is coming. He's trying to tell them different things is happening. And, and eventually, they got ready to put him in a, put him in a hole. And they sold him off. Jealousy will cause you to kill everybody in your family. Jealousy will cause you. Why are we jealous of one another? Here we go. Let's go to James, the fourth chapter, verses one to three. Read that for me. If you may, can you please stand? James. The fourth chapter, uh -huh. verses one to three. Now I'm going to stop right there. And we fit to have a little bit more church. Yes. James 4, one through three. Yes. New Living Translation. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? 
Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you want. You, you want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have. But you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet, you don't have what you want because you didn't ask God for it. Verse 3. And even when you ask, you didn't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You may be sitting up that shit. Listen, you want what's going to give you pleasure. So tonight, guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. I guess if I were used for a topic today, I was just saying, be careful about that guilty pleasure. Be careful about that guilty pleasure. That guilty pleasure can cause you to lose out. Because it says in verse 1, you will find, you will cause quarrels and fights among, you do it in your household, you do it in the ministry, we will, because you're looking out at what somebody else has. You're looking at other people's clothes, you're looking at other people's this, and other people's houses, cars, and lands, and instead of asking, hey sis, how did you get this? Because what you have, I want. I'm not, and, and, and it's okay. I'm not jealousy, you sis. I just, I admire you. See, us women don't know how to say I admire you. Okay, so all right, for case in point, this is my mentor. Miss Michelle, when I text her, I don't text her, hey girl, hey girlfriend, what's up sis? I don't do that, because you know why? Because I explained to her already. You are not my sis. You ain't my friend. You're right in the spirit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean it like that, y'all. <laughs> she had to clarify that. In the spirit, we sisters in Christ, yes, but but when it comes down to it all, she's my mentor. I text her, hey mentor, how you doing? God bless you. Good morning, coach. You know. The reason why I and I told her, I said, there's no disrespect. I said, I love you, I honor you. I said, I'm watching you from afar. I said, but the reason why I have to do this, I said, because if I become too close to you, I can't hear you when you speak. I can't hear. So when we become too close with people, we can't hear when somebody is speaking and warning you about something. You can't hear when somebody's telling you, tragedy. My God. Come on. Come on. And it is a common place. And a lot of times we get to a point where we have evil desires. Jeez. We cause war. We cause war. No, this is, means war. No, 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 no. You cause war because why? You are so busy looking. If I looked at what Miss Michelle had, then you know, let me tell you something. I would be an angry black woman. I would be an angry person because all I'm doing is looking at what she had. But I didn't ask her. Miss Michelle, can you please tell me the secret to success? Yeah. Can you tell me how did you work to go get it? How did you formulate that thing? Because why? I really believe that I would like to have the same thing. I admire you enough to ask you, how did you get it? Can I partner up with you? Can I sit with you? Can I sit under you? A lot of times we want the, the title of prophetess, but none of y'all want to sit.
Deidre ain't black. Deidre ain't black. But my husband, he said, Deidre, he said, baby, he said, I just, I'm so proud of you. He said, because you done changed. You done calmed down. Yeah. He said, girl, <laughs> y'all don't understand. Mm -hmm. I done calmed down. I done just relaxed a little bit. I mean, because I can shake. Ooh. My God. And my husband be like, <laughs> nah, boo. He was like, oh, I'm proud of you. Thank you, bro. Got you. <laughs> you know how they make me feel good? I keep my head up. And every now and then he'll hear me say, God, keep me calm. God, keep me calm. God, keep me calm. God, keep me calm. He was like, girl, what, what are you saying? God, keep me calm. And he'd be like, oh, why are you saying God, keep me calm? Bro, did you see what she, he was like, I heard what she said. I know, right? God, keep her calm. God, keep her calm. Because why? I used to be a whirlwind. See, let me tell you something. I can tell, I can talk about me. I don't need nobody to talk about me. I can tell you about me myself. I used to be a whirlwind. Come on. Honey, I thought first. Think about it later. I kill innocent people. Come on. And I'm not talking about shooting, shooting, baby. He said, I'm going to teach you how to slay right. He said, I'm going to teach you how to slay so good that they will never know the evidence. Woo, God, your fingerprints won't be on the situation. My God, your voice won't be on the situation. They won't even know that it was you that, uh, he said, I'm going to teach you how to slay a good demon. I had to learn how to pray. In the spirit, my God. I had to learn how to pray in tongues. I had to learn how to pray in several tongues. I had to learn how to pray. <laughs> my God, I used to make fun of my husband. Cause this man told me, he sometimes speak in tongues so good that he sound like he's Chinese, right? And I was intimidated by it. No, I was, I was intimidated by it. Because why? He was talking in tongues and I ain't understand it. And, and I, was the, I, I was like, man, I can't be around you. He said, no, you can be around me. He said, you're going to learn. Uh -huh. You're going to learn now. I can I can speak in all kinds of crazy tongues. Yeah. And people are like, oh, what, 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 what? I said, yeah, 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 I got that, 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 yeah, I know I got that too. You know, and, and I praise God. See, when you socialize with good people, yeah. Yeah. when you socialize with good people, yeah. when you socialize with people that know how to pray and, and try to pull you out of a pit, let me tell you something we said. to give you favor to unlock the door. He said, I'm going to, even though you may be a, 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 a prisoner in the situation, he said, I'm still going to give you favor to have the keys to unlock the door and have the freedom to roam around. And when it's time, go back in and be a good servant and sit down. God said, I'm going to give you favor, but it's up to you. My God, to leave whatever it is Jesus, because at the end of the day, you got to remember you can't fix this thing. It's not about you. Some of y'all trying to make this thing about you. You're trying to make this life about you. You're trying to make this whole situation about you. They don't like me. No, they don't like their God that's in you. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Won't you stop this thing? Stop trying to be cute. Stop trying to be on top of everything. Because we're starting wars for no apparent reason. Jealousy 
jealousy of other other people, what they have going on. Can I, I, I'm going to switch, I'm done. Listen, baby girl. Yes, ma'am, can you stand for me? I'm going to ask you a few questions. I just want to ask you a few questions. How old are you? 17. 17. You're in school? Yes, ma'am. What grade, baby? 11th grade. 11th grade. So you fit to go, you're ready to go to 12th grade, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what you doing over the summer? Um, upper bound and working. Say it again. Upper bound and working. Upper bound? Yeah. What's that? It's a, like a summer. college regular. Right? Oh, yeah, baby, you got to talk, you got to talk regular. <laughs> <laughs> Ebony, I didn't do the face. <laughs> don't do Y'all have to forgive me. I don't talk, but my face says yeah. <laughs> Okay, so say that again. I do upper bounds and college readiness um, for uh, night blues, 12th grade. She said, okay, I understand. <laughs> Girl, okay, listen, let me tell you something. I heard the Holy Spirit while you was dancing, I heard God say summer, summer, summer. I said, summer. God said, I want you to be careful through the summer. You have to be careful through the summer. Because I hear and see some friends, and God said that he doesn't want you to get caught up in the conversation. He don't want to get you caught up in the fight. There's a fight that's trying to break out, and it's trying to, trying, to, trying to get you to have a bad name. So God said if he wants to protect you from that, he said, so throughout the summer, be careful. Thank you, Jesus. Careful throughout the summer. Yes, God. So you won't get a bad rep. Thank you, Jesus. I hear a boy. I don't know what that's all about. Thank you. I hear a boy. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I got a baby too. I'm saying. But the Holy Spirit said, be careful throughout the summer. Jesus. Stay focused. Because you're on your way to the mountaintop. Amen. Yes. You're on your way to the mountaintop. Yes, your mama. Come on, mama, stand up. God gonna give you strength to raise your children. You need strength because you trying so hard. And it's been a fight, it's been a hassle. And I hear God say he gonna bless your home financially. There's some things that are going on in the home. There's some bills that need to be paid. It's like everything just going like this. Just it's just, it's just it's coming up together and it just seems like it don't it don't know what to do. You know, you know, okay, this is what I'm gonna say. I don't know if you have already, but you need to connect with Miss Michelle Kofer right here. Because let me tell you something. The reason why I say you should connect with Miss Michelle Kofer, because you are a single mom and you have children. She wants to give you an opportunity to make money from home, part-time full time, at your leisure. Because you need more income. You want better for yourself. Okay, I hear something about a neighborhood. I don't know if this neighborhood is not good. This neighborhood that you live in, some type of neighborhood, this neighborhood. It's time for you to come out that neighborhood. It's time for you to come out the neighborhood. It's, it's, it's a bad neighborhood. It's a bad neighborhood. And you're trying to raise you trying to raise your children right so they won't get caught up Jesus. in the neighborhood and get caught up with the corner man. Yes, God. <laughs> I know about the corner man. I know about that. God said she's trying to pull you out, but you need help being pulled out of this place. Yes, God. So get connected tonight. Get connected with someone. This woman right here. Get connected with her. She's not no broke woman. She ain't no cheap woman. She's so she's so she's so financially fit. She she at the Marriott. She can pay for her own place. <laughs> like no, I'm just joking, but no for real. She ain't she ain't no broke woman. She's a strong woman of God. She has confidence that she's gonna pour into you. Man. Because that's what you need. You need confidence. You need strength. You need a support system. A system, somebody that can kind of like rock you, but rock you can throw you out. Amen. Amen. 
Because it's okay to be rocked. Right. We ain't trying to have you be a baby forever. That's right. She going to rock you. Amen. Now you going to sink or swim. You good. You good. You good. Now you want to swim. You're ready. You're ready to swim. You're ready for your mindset to be. Because, see, let me tell you something about mindset. Mindset determines your outcome. If you don't have a good mindset, then you're not going to be able to do what God calls you to do. Okay? So, God, God wants you to get that in order. Link up. And, and it's so. And it's in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. Even your car. Your car. That car. Oh, that poor little car. <laughs> Don't say your little poor little car. Baby girl, we're going to, God going to fix it. He's going to turn things around. And it ain't going to take long. It ain't going to be a long, drawn out process because you've been waiting long. You've been waiting patiently. God said he's going to, he's going to do it for you in Jesus' name. And it is so. Oh my God, come on. What's your name? Jan. Say it again. Jan. 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 Your sweetheart. Your sweetheart. Your sweetheart with a sweetheart. Like your heart is really nice. Got a nice heart. God said it's okay to give. But calm down. The people use you too fast. Don't let people use you for no apparent reason. Some people just use you just so they can get what they want to get out of you, and then they walk away from you and leave Jane. A little Jane by herself. God said he's going to bring comfort to you, but he wants you. It's okay to sow. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. But you got to be careful because every ground ain't right. Who you connected to? Be careful. All the time. Oh, I ain't slow, baby. I pick up real fast. Be careful. Be careful. They will leave you. I don't care if they watch you. My phone number is 609 I'm not afraid. Can't know witchcraft. My God. Hit this bull right here. I'm good. You ain't gotta be scary. Be careful who you sow to. Be careful who you sow to. Because you so be. You don't sow no $20, 50 cents, $1.99. Don't let them take all your money. Don't let them take all your money. Don't, 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 don't. Jane, be smart. Jan, Jan, baby, be smart. I'm bad with names. Be smart. Because it ain't nothing stupid about you. You're very smart. But God is going to take some. He's going to take it off your eyes, the scales, so you can see, so you can see and so you can hear. He's going to unplug your ears so you can hear and see. He's going to give you dreams in the middle of the night. He's going to speak to you, and he's going to tell you when and when not, when and when not to do something. He's going to tell you when they're scamming you. And you want to tell them that you know. God said, I want you to be bold in this season. To tell them that you know that they scam at you. My God, Jesus. God said, tell them that they scam at you. Let them know. Because the one thing about the enemy, you got to let them know. You're going to. Come on. You got to let them know. You got to tell them. 
okay? Because you're beautiful. Inside and out. You're anointed as well. God said you are anointed. Sometimes you get a little intimidated. You have to be intimidated. Because God said, just like he used me, he can use you too. And even free. See, I don't have a problem. I'm not insecure. I don't have a problem saying God can use you greater than me. Because he can. And he will. He can and he will. Yes. It's all right. That's how we're supposed to be. You're supposed to want other people to be greater yes. than you. That's you should right. never want somebody to be mediocre. That's right. That's it. What kind of woman of God would I be if I tell you to be less than me? That's witchcraft. And tell you that it's witchcraft. <laughs> Shut up. 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 Shut He's going to brighten up your day. He's going to give you more words to say, more tongues. He's going to bless you. You're going to have an encounter with God. And it's going to be a serious encounter. And it's going to be an encounter that's going to shake the ground. You are anointed. He's going to bless you. He's going to fill your hands with plenty. You are special. Sometimes you don't always feel special. But God said you are special. You are special. He loves you. You are important to him. He wants you to have everything. Every great thing. And I love you. I don't know have to know you. I saw you in the hallway. I didn't say nothing to you. Sometimes I can't talk because if I talk to you, you be like, she already knew. Nope. I don't say my hey, how you doing? Hey, white girl, come here. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come Bless y'all for your sacrifice. I'm hurry to get out of here because see, I know you gotta eat. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm coming to you later. Like, this chick right here. <laughs> yeah. We fuss all day long. For real. But God's gonna bless y'all. Yes. He's healing your hearts. Yes, God. Jeez. He's healing your hearts. Yes, Jesus. The wounds from childhood. My dad was Childhood wounds, things that y'all been through. God said He's gonna bless y'all, and He's gonna pull you out of the pit tonight. You're not gonna have to suffer no more. And you know what? God's gonna get y'all to the point where you're not gonna even be worried about if somebody see you, hear you, know you, feel you, like you. you you're not gonna even care no more. It ain't even gonna, it ain't even gonna phase you no more. What else? Y'all ain't got to like me. I ain't got to be a part of the family. You ain't. Uh, and God's going to surround y'all with more people that love y'all for y'all. Yes. Yes. And that's it. Because yes. that's what you need. You just need people to love you for you. Yes. Stop looking at your mistakes. Stop looking at what you did, what you didn't do. Just like you for you. Yes. Come on. And God's going to bless y'all for that. He's going to bless you for what you poured out. Because yes. it was a sacrifice and it was a poor. You really wanted to serve. Yes. For the first time, you felt like somebody. Hey, shut up. Lord this time. Yes. I'm honoring all of that. 
Wow. Good. He's honoring all of it. He sees all of it. He loves both of y'all. Yes, he does. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. He said, I love you. I don't care. What you didn't do, what you didn't do. I said, he loves you. Yes, God. And that's all that family said. He said, I'll fix the rest. Yes, God. He said, I'll fix the rest overnight. I'll yes. fix the rest. When you get back home, I'll fix the rest. You'll come home to something clean. You'll come yes. home to clean sleep. You'll come home to this. You'll come home to that. Yes, I said, I'll God. fix all that. Don't even worry about it. He said, I got you. Yes, God. And it is so. Sweetheart, yes. mama. What's your name, baby? Mama back here. Yes. That's your mom? My name is Rosalind Rich. God bless you, woman of God. How are you? Thank you. I'm blessed. Amen. 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 I see you. Bye bye bye. God said he gonna calm you down. He gonna calm your spirit down. Because sometimes it's a lot. It's a lot. You become frustrated, baby. I heard, I heard it all up in your voice. You frustrated. You know what I'm saying? God said, he said he's going to knock all that frustration. But it's up to you, mommy. It's up to you, mother. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. You see, God, he's a gentleman. He only can do what you allow him to do. Yes. Whatever he allows you to do. He said, listen, if you allow me, I'll do it. If you allow me, I'll, I'll take care of it. But you got to let go of the frustration. You're frustrated, frustrated, frustrated. God said he wants to fix that so he can give you more peace because you want peace, but you're so frustrated that you can't even see the peace. And God said forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. That's what you have to do now. This is the time for you to forgive. I'm, and I'm not talking about, I'm talking about your kids forgive. And I'm talking about stuff that happened 20 years ago, 30 years ago. God said forgive all of that too. Let it go. Let it go. We thank God for your healing. We thank God for your healing. But God said he's going to do some more healing. He's going to do some more healing. He's going to do some more fixing. He said, stop worrying. Stop worrying. Because you worry a lot. God said, don't worry about nothing. He said, he has it all in control. He's seeing about you. You are a blessed woman of God. I don't care what they've been trying to tell you down through the years. I'm talking about household, I'm talking about family. I don't care, I told you my number is 609-338-7577. I don't care who leaves. I don't care who leaves. Like I said, God said, you are a blessed woman of God. Okay? You're blessed, you're anointed. And God's going to work stuff out for you. And you are favored. God's going to bless you with the best. My God. He's going to give you peace. Yes. He's going to continue to heal you. I don't care what they say. Yes. All right. All right, you got it. Okay. You got it. You got it. I love your blue hair. I love it, Mama. I think it's fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, because I done had green, I had midnight blue, red, and pink and purple all together. Yeah, I done had it all blue. I like all of that. That's hot. High five. I'm probably scaring this lady right now. I am so sorry. You got it. Really? You got it real good. Yeah, yeah, I did. But you are a sweet young lady. Yep, he done freed you. He gonna keep freeing you. He gonna bless you. He gonna bless you because you wanted to be free. My son. Yeah, she did it the You wanted to be free. You wanted to be healed. You wanted to be set free. You wanted to do the work of the Lord. You knew what you were doing wasn't working no more.
turn, yes, in God. return, you gonna reap the harvest. My son, the harvest is coming for you. The harvest is coming. The harvest is coming. Financially, harvest. Is God said, I'm gonna bless you. I should pray about myself. You have the cash app? Yes, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, um, send her a hundred dollars. Send her a hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Send her a hundred dollars. I'm so thankful because I know God is going to bless me. I know I'm going to my heart. And in order for me to get what God wants me, in order for, for God to get, get the, what he wants out of me, I got to show. Yes, God. And I'm not just talking about showing words. Yes, God. Hey. Ah, she come by, by, by. I, I feel the struggle. Yes. I feel the struggle. And it's scary sometimes. And you feel like you're about to choke. And I find the spirit of panic attacks that try to hold over you. Panic attacks that try to hey, choke you. Like, and it's like a thing that's like a knot that comes in your throat. And it makes you feel like you're about to have, like you're about to pass out or something. God said you will live and not die. That's not your time. Than what you expected to move, you can do that. 
God said, you can do whatever it is that you yes, want to do. He said, I'm going to grant you that. He said, I'm going to grant you that. He's going to enlarge your territory. He's going to enlarge your financial territory. He's going to enlarge your husband's territory as well. Now, I, I, I believe your daughter's in the business as well. Uh-huh. She said, but God's going to, he's going to elevate her as well. God said, don't you worry about nothing. Don't you worry about finances. Don't you worry about nothing. Don't stress out about nothing. He said, because he's going to do something special for you. And he said, even with Miss Robin, he said, I'm going to enlarge her territory as well. Now, I don't know if Miss Robin is doing, um, she has contracts on the table. I do know that much. She has contracts on the table. Um, endorsements. Endorsements. So you let her know that God's going to enlarge her territory. There's some endorsements. There's some things on the table that she really wants to do. And, 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 and there's some things that are being offered to her to do. Commercials and, 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 and billboards and different things of that nature. That's what I see for her as well. God said he's going to enlarge your territory. He's going to enlarge your team's territory. In the mighty name of Jesus. You don't have to worry about if they plant here, if they plant there. God said I'm still going to enlarge your territory. It's not even about the planting. He said because if, if they don't plant, it don't mean it's going to stop your income. God said I'm still going to enlarge it. It don't matter where they plant. If they plant North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, it does not matter. But there's still, you're, it's going to enlarge your tree. I'm done. But man of God, woman of God. Can I pop this? Can, can I pop one of these balloons? The one on the bottom? Sure. This right here?
the church. Okay. He'll give me a shack on the room. Come on. Come on. Yes. Because I didn't ask him. I didn't, I wasn't specific. Yes. 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 You have to be specific in this hour. We're not dealing with an ordinary type of God. Come on. We're not dealing with a God that does not know how. God said, I, I, I'm going to bless you. Yes. I'm going to enlarge your territory yes. as well. God said, y'all going to take off running as yes. well. Just like my husband and I, we went to Florida in February, I'm sorry, in December. By February, we had a church. Yes. yes, God. So if God can do for us, yes. what do you think he's going to do for you? Yes, God. What do you think he's going to do for you? Yes. He's going to do the same thing for you. And God going to build you, build your heart up. Yes. He gonna build you. He gonna build you, woman of God. He gonna build you. You gonna be stronger than ever in the name of Jesus. You gonna be stronger. I need your call. My 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 my. I said, I'm gonna carry. He said, I'm gonna carry the weight for you, Ebony. I'm gonna carry the weight for you. The pain that you carry. He said, the insecurities, the anger, the frustration. You he said, I won't carry all of that. He said, because you don't have to carry this thing. He said, you're too beautiful to carry, it, said the Lord. I need to go. God said, do you know how beautiful you are? God said, you are too beautiful to carry the weight. He said, he don't want you carrying this weight because you are amazing. God said, do you know how anointed you are? You don't need to carry the weight. God said, you don't have to filter anything. Who shot my mind? Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. 
God has given y'all two daughters that love you. That love you. God has given y'all two daughters that love you. And by, 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 by God said, you are the mother. These are your children. This is your family. Come on. Your family, your girls. Yes, yes. Your girls. Yes. <laughs> you always wanted children. You got them. You don't have to go through the labor pain. Everything ain't always been. Come on. Sometimes you don't have to go through the labor pain. See, God didn't want you to hurt Ebony. Churches and pull them out the gutter. 